Hi, I'm Neil Hermes and welcome to my weekly bird wrap. This is where I get to share with you some of the interesting and fun stories that have been happening in the world of birds. In Australia this week we had one of our largest earthquakes in a decade uh, and it struck an area just outside of Melbourne, uh, something just underneath six on the Richter scale, which is not unusual in Australia. We get these big earthquakes and it really shook the city of Melbourne. And one of the things in Melbourne we have is our famous falcons, our Collins Street falcons, that nest on a ledge of one of the highest buildings in Melbourne. And of course, precariously located on the edge of the, a tall building, these birds felt the impact of that earthquake. And one of the lovely stories we've got this week is how the falcon got up from its eggs and looked around as the, as the building swayed around it, took off, and then happily, a little while later, came back and resettled on its clutch. So it's a reaction of a peregrine falcon to a very large earthquake that hit the building that it was nesting on. And of course, peregrine falcons are a fabulous, amazing bird of prey. They are the fastest moving animal on the planet. Over 300 kilometers per hour has been recorded when the bird flies down at high speed to strike its prey in midair. And these birds will catch things like ducks or pigeons in midair or at least hit them in midair and then follow through and, and kill them and eat them on the ground. They're an amazingly powerful falcon. They occur all around the world. There's, there's peregrines recorded in the, Antarc in the Arctic um, and through all the main continent, continents. They're not found in Antarctica and curiously they're not found in New Zealand either, but virtually every other spot on the planet we have these spectacular, beautiful falcons. And as I say, happily this week, our Collins Street falcons um, survived the earthquake and you can see a little clip of their reaction on my YouTube channel or on my website. The second story I'd like to share with you this week is a story about an attack by uh, or an, a, an a interaction by a, an Australian raven on a, on a drone that was delivering f coffee to a house. That occurred in Canberra. There's a company in Canberra called, in Australia called Wing that's delivering food medical supplies, uh, hardware supplies to houses using drones. This particular drone flew in over a house in Canberra and this Australian raven decided that this bird was coming too close to its nest and it took to this bird just like it would take to a wedge-tailed eagle if it came nearby and, and grabbed a hold of the drone as it was doing its, its delivery. I was called in to have a look at that uh, situation and I made some recommendations about having drone deliveries not operate ar immediately around that, web, uh, that nest site whilst the Australian ravens can get their chicks out. Um, and again, you can see a clip of this on my YouTube channel or on the website. Um, but it's a good story in that the drone was able to operate safely and the birds were unharmed. And in the next week or two, the nestlings will come out of that nest and um, the uh, drone deliveries to the suburb will continue afterwards. So have a little look at that story on, on the website. My third story today is going to be about the uh, Philippines eagle. Now this is a very um, a sad story in a way it's because it's about one of the most magnificent eagles on the planet and it being in a critically endangered state. The Philippines eagle is the largest eagle in the world. It's a massive bird. Have a look at the photos on the website. There's a picture of a keeper at a zoo in the Philippines holding one of these birds and they are enormous. They have this huge shaggy crest, an enormous bill, and this haunting eyes that look at you in the photographs. Once they were called the monkey-eating eagle, um, and they do eat monkeys in the forests of the Philippines, but they tend to largely eat lemurs and snakes and birds and, and, and other larger uh, vertebrate prey. Uh, the president of the Philippines decreed the, a new name a, a couple of decades ago and called them the Philippines Eagle and then subsequently they were declared the national bird of the Philippines. But sadly there's only about 400 of these magnificent eagles left and the reason I mention it today is because right now they're starting their nesting season. Now I was about to say nesting season for the year but these birds take two years to nest. Um, the whole cycle from laying the eggs through to raising the young takes the, virtually the full, full part of 24 months. So right now at least half the population is starting its nesting season in September in the Philippines. 
They'll be deep in the forest, they're extremely high in the trees, 30 metres up, and they'll be starting to lay their eggs as part of a process that they, it's going, they're, they're going to be committed to for the next two years. And I've got a couple of photographs of, uh, of the nests uh, on the website that you can have a look at. One of the curious things about Philippines eagles, despite the fact that they're enormous and they occur over these rainforests, you'd think they'd be relatively easy to see as they soared around. But in fact, they don't soar over the forest to eat. What they do is they hunt by running down through the branches underneath the canopy. So they hunt down their prey by chasing it through the trees. They don't fly over the top. When they get to the bottom of the hill, they come out, fly up, land at the top of another mountain, and then f essentially hop and, f and glide down through the trees to get their prey. An amazing way of this enormous eagle with wingspan over two meters for catching its prey. So my last story for the week is about um, my galahs. I mentioned a week or two ago that the galahs were checking out the nest boxes in my garden at home. And they finally settled on one of the boxes and they've now set up house. Um, I checked the box the other day and there's now four eggs. You'll be able to see a photograph of that on the website. Uh, and so they're now settled into a, 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 an incubation process where the male and female switch across um, each day for a period. Uh, the male comes in and takes over from the female for a little and the galahs are now nesting again. You may be able to hear the uh, silver eye in the background uh, just above, uh, above me as I'm talking. It's doing a beautiful song there as we, uh, as we are out here in this beautiful spring day, or almost spring day. Um, so galahs are a very common bird in Australia. It's a lot of people call them pink cockatoos or pink-breasted cockatoos um, or galah. Uh, they occur all across Australia. They're a very common bird. Um, and they have actually increased in range in the last couple of decades, coming closer to the, to the coast and into, into bigger cities. So uh, it's lovely to have these birds in the yard and have them nesting. And I'll bring you some more updates about their progress in future uh, bird wraps. But if you'd like to check this story out or any of my other stories, have a look at my YouTube channel and have a look at the, uh, the posts on the website. Thanks for joining me this week and we'll see you again soon.